Alistair Clarkson, he's absolutely slammed Hawthorne uh, for its handling into the report into the club's treatment of First Nations players. The four-time Premiership coach, he's absolutely fed up with media leaks and just how long this process is taking. Um, heaven forbid, where, where's this going? It's just... Uh, as I, as I said last week, it's just, it's just extraordinary that we, we waited, waited eight months. Um, you know, there's the, the, the game is the victim of this. The game, the game is shamed. Obviously, myself, Fakes, Jason, our families have been shamed. Um, the Indigenous and First Nations families, they've been shamed. Um, and there's one particular party out there that was the catalyst for all this. Um, that haven't been investigated at all. Um, their governance and conduct in this whole thing, the Hawthorne Football Club, just shameful. Um, let's do an investigation on them and their practices and see how they go. How sad is that, watching that as a Hawthorne legend, watching another Hawthorne legend and four-time Premiership coach just unload on the club like You've that? got to understand what, what you're dealing with. Alice is a great coach. You could say he's the doyen of coaches right now. But he is true to what he is, and he's a fighter. He's a street fighter in a coach's guise, and he's brilliant at it. He's frustrated. You can see the frustration on his face. And he's taken a bit of a swipe at the procedure and those running the procedure. He's taken um, aim at some other parties. And the one party he can, as I said, he's, in his nature, he's a bit of a fighter. And the one party he can give a real good whack to without much coming back the other way right now is his former employer, the Hawthorne Footy Club. Um, as a player who's been involved with that club and loved that club and sat on the board for a decade as well, um, I don't like hearing him have a go at the club like that. But I understand his frustration and he's wanting to vent somewhere because he's hearing all this noise where he shouldn't be hearing the noise, where he has been asked to c complete with secrecy and he's not getting it in return. So he wants to lash out and he's lashed out at Hawthorne today. Do you fear for him and his wellbeing at the moment? Because he said today, you know, I'm a big boy, I can handle this. But at the same time, it's, it's his reputation that is being dragged through the mud. And at the same time as that, he's having to embark on one of the most challenging rebuilds we've seen in recent times. His team scored 34 points last week and he's, he's trying to rebuild this club that has suffered for so long. So there is a lot going on in yeah. his world at the moment. Do you fear for him and his wellbeing? Uh, I don't know him well enough to, to say that I could speak to his wellbeing, but he has one great point. He needs procedural fairness and he hasn't received it. He just has not got that so far. Um, it's been a one-way street. You, you, at the moment, somebody makes the accusation. It comes in various forms through the, the, the um, inquiry. It comes through the allegations. And he is bound by the code of this investigation to remain silent. But not everyone's been silent on the other side. So he doesn't get procedural fairness. And I can understand that he'd be upset with that. Uh, it would take it... It would really weigh on him. For sure it would. The worst thing in this society, in this day and age, the worst thing you can have is being the, the, the racial uh, allegations levelled at you. Mm. And he would be hoping for this to be tidied up and find a resolution as soon as possible. But it, there's nowhere in sight yet. So he's feeling the heat of that. As for his team, they're not going well. And that, that will all compound on the way he sits and, and emotionally takes it in. So I feel for him. Yep. I feel for him too. The stress of a senior coach plus they've got this to do with it, him and Chris Fagan, of course. Let's get on to the actual football. Ben Cunnington has been mm. dropped by Alistair Clarkson. Perhaps we saw this coming somewhat, given he's been the sub and, and subbed off. Um, is this the right call? It's a tough call because he's a legend of that club. Is Last it the week, right he, call though? He, yeah. Ben Cunnington's really own, own, the only service he now these days gives to his team is clearances. He got none last week. The week before, though, he got 11. The week before that, he got nine. 
So he's had one bad week of it. Three or four weeks ago, I don't think I think he might have had one at the MCG on a in a night game. So it's happened twice in the one year by round eight. Is it the right call? There is a belief that you can't play him and Hugh Greenwood in the same team. Do I you think, believe that? I think it can. If you're on the bottom of the ladder or they're as good as on the bottom of the ladder, two boys who are exceptionally good at winning the ball, I think he can find a place for both of them. Mm. Yeah, the, the one thing they do believe about Ben Cunnington is once the stoppage has ended, he doesn't make the next line when the ball flows. You'll never see him run past for a handball. He's, he's fairly low on handball receives, but that's not the beast he is. So if he's not winning the stoppage, the clearance, they think he doesn't have a great value. I, I, he's probably, besides Buddy, my favourite player to watch. But is it the right call, Dermot? Yes or no? I would, I would say no. If I was on that board okay. and I was in a footy department, I'd say no, we, we need to give this boy better. Let's turn our attention to Friday night football. We've got a jam-packed schedule, so we've got to keep okay. moving on. Move on.